So just home from work, uh, another day painting shop fronts, um, very good, uh, but we've actually got something very cool today, uh, got a present delivery from Sigma Sport, check this out. So in here we've got something which is pretty awesome. Garmin Air J20. I do only get to keep it for a couple of weeks, three actually I think, but uh, yeah, we're going to stick it on the bike now and then uh, we're going to test it out over the next three weeks so I'll let you know how that goes. First things first, we've got to get all of my old sensors off. So let's do that now. So now we've got to pair these guys up. Rotate the crank arms. Nothing. Well that's all the sensors connected so I guess the last thing to do is to put this on. Snazzy. Well that looks a hell of a lot more compact than my last one. And we've got the cadence sensor and on the hub there, the speed sensor. So that's pretty cool, hopefully get out tomorrow uh, for a ride. Thinking actually tomorrow it might be raining, so we'll have to see what happens. Um, bit of a fair weather rider as I said before. Um, that's all installed, ready to go, and thanks again to the guys at Sigma Sports for sending this over. Let's have a three week test of it and see how we get on. So I'm just headed off now to see my nan and granddad. Uh, they're headed off on holiday tomorrow with some other members of my family. So I've got to feed the fish, do the watering, loads of other stuff. So I've got to go and get some instructions, see what needs to be watered and uh, hopefully I don't kill anything. Turn it off with that. So that stops the yeah. pump. No, it doesn't stop the pump. Oh. The pump's electric. That's that's just the it's a ball cock in in underneath the bridge. Right. I'll show you. That's turned it on again because I think it's going to be complicated. Uh, what we said was, I mean, if you could get up three three times in the week, we're going to do it tomorrow morning. Feed them twelve hours. We'll give them a good dollop. You only have to give them just one full jar full. One jar each day. Each of the three days. Yeah. Give them Will that be enough? No, no. We've got to fill it up again in a minute. So let's have a look at the pumps. Well, you don't need to do anything to the pumps. So I don't need to do anything with the pumps themselves. They just, no, you shouldn't it's automatic. To, See those spots? That's rain. Awesome. So 
I did actually have the Garmin mount far too high. It was kind of... I angled it to be equal with my stem, which was fine, but I didn't like the position of it, so I lowered it down, went on the ride, and realised it was too low. So I've got to angle it back up again, ever so slightly, and then hopefully it'll be okay. So we've adjusted the mount, and it's flatter. It's going to be as good as it can get. But it's actually one thing I'm not liking at the moment, and that doesn't reflect necessarily on the unit. That reflects on, I guess, the mount more than anything. But I kind of want it to be level with my stem. So if you imagine the stem continuing in front of the handlebars, that's where I want it to be. And I think if I was to get one of these in the future myself, and I do need an upgrade, I think there's a K-Edge mount. Is that the right one? And uh, I think that's probably what I'd have to do, because I'd want it flush rather than sat up. And I'll show you what I mean. So you can see there that it sits quite high. And really, I want it to be down here. I'll tell you what else I did that was really stupid. I was trying to start my ride, and I was touching these two bottom buttons here. Hopefully you can see those, thinking that they were touch sensitive. They're not. These two little bits at the bottom are actually buttons, and for some reason I thought they were feet. Don't even ask. Time to go out riding, arm warmers for the first time in a long time, and base layer for the first time in a very long time. And all I can say is, winter is coming! home from the ride uh, you might notice I'm not wearing arm warmers typical uh, the weather was cold when I left cool after about five miles then the Sun came out and then by the end it was um, warm so yeah a bit of a temperature fluctuation in there um, but some good miles I think just shy of 30 so not too bad um, but Garmin 820 observation so I've come from an Edge 705, so that's a pretty big step. Obviously, that device is, what, five, five or so years old now, I guess. Um, so the first thing for me is really the form factor, um, because the Edge 705 is a big, bulky, very heavy device. Um, and, I mean, the difference in size is pretty big, really. The rotating lock mount, whatever you want to call that, I love that as well. Um, but, obviously, that's on previous Garmin's. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not keen on the mount at all, actually. I think it needs to sit flush or in line with the stem. And it's weird because on the 810, which James has, it is like that. So it seems to me a bit of a backward step that they've done it that way, but that's how that is. So what about the display? I think the display is really good, actually. It worked pretty well in bright light, it worked pretty well under trees, it worked well in darker conditions, haven't tried it in the rain yet. But what about the touch screen? Garmin say that it's quick and responsive. I would say it's not that quick and it's not really that responsive. It's more responsive than quick, but if you compare it to a smartphone screen, where you can flick between pages and go in and out of apps and flick through web pages and play games, whatever, it's laggy and I don't really think that's what they would have been after when they said quick and responsive to be honest. To be fair it does the job perfectly well swiping between screens it does it every time so I haven't had an issue with it not doing what I wanted I think it's more of a case of when you do it it's not dragging with your finger it's just behind and slower so I don't know whether that can be improved in a software update or a firmware update or anything like that but that would be a good improvement I think um, just to add to the ease of use I guess and things with the panel at the top the notification kind of panel that comes down at the top for the basic settings I think that could you know it's that sort of thing that could be sped up um, I think you can tell with the speed most when you're accessing through the menu system so if you're trying to create say a second screen for all of your data and you're going into settings and activity profiles training 
screen one and then trying to choose which options you want. It's that it's that way you're going to notice. So you're clicking, and especially scrolling. Scrolling is I wouldn't say a nightmare, but it's not easy to just you can't flick down a list and have it zap by and get to the bottom of the list if you like. So I think definitely speed speed is a factor in those kind of things. But fortunately, you you're not riding along really setting up data screens and stuff, and mostly it's just stopped on the same screen for the ride. So. It's not really a big deal, I guess. Um, but otherwise, as I said, the form factor is awesome. The display is really good. I personally love being able to get as much data as I can on the screen. And coming from the 705, where I could only have five data fields across the screen, being able to have ten, that's amazing for me. So I can set up loads of different pages. And, you know, I'm sure everybody else with the 800 or the 810 or 805, whatever it was, is uh, saying, yeah, we've had that for ages. Um, but that's cool for me. The other thing is I've heard about this incident reporting feature and I think I'm going to leave it off because based on what I've heard is it's causing more problems than it is uh, solving problems and um, I think the idea of it is awesome. Notifying somebody when you've had a crash is pretty cool especially if you're not able to do so but the fact is it's notifying people when they haven't had a crash when their bike's fallen over or whatever else and I think that is that's more dangerous than uh, having it enabled, frankly. Um, so until they release a software up there, something that sorts that out, that's definitely going to stay off, I think. Now to get water instructions for the home. These this one here, here. These three here. There. One either side of the vent. So I've got to direct the water and it can't go on top of the leaves. What happens when it rains? No. I'm going to have to write this down. This one, this one, that one, okay. those this four. Old Sorry, can you explain how to work this? No, because you know how to work that. Oh. If it's really hot, could you come and open the door and leave the door open? And they obviously need picking. Put them Mum's in. related to Alan Titchmarsh. Is that it? So I got a little wind protector for the microphone on the camera. Check this out. Okay then. Just out for a bit of a walk this evening, meeting up with James. Trying to hatch a few Pokemon. I think he should be down here at one of the gyms. That sounds silly saying it out loud, but uh, yeah, we're at a Poke Gym. Hopefully gonna level it up. Find out a new trick for anyone who's watching who's interested in Pokemon. Use a lower level Pokemon than what's currently on the gym and it boosts its XP much more quickly, much more easily. Hey buddy, how's the internet? Jumping. <laughs> Do I have to do this every night? Because I only have to do Nan and Grandad's three times next week. How come your plants require more water than theirs? Because <laughs> I'm looking after them. 